Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener, your host, Ken Lane, here every week talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. And we are in the peak of the growing season, really. The the monsoons, this summer season, marks a second growing season, so a second planting season. And then we'll get into fall. It's almost a third. I mean, that fall season is... Uh, October, November, that's when the best time to plant your evergreens, that fall colored uh, maples and aspens. So we're so mild in the mountains of Arizona that uh, we grow almost, I mean, we have planting crews. I mean, we have a fairly large garden center here in, in Prescott and our two crews, they're busy year round installing plants. Now y- you can't say that up in the higher elevations, let's say, you know, Williams, Flagstaff, you know, that's 6,500 plus area, the the ground starts to freeze, but we really don't have a a freezing ground. This is hard for folks from the Midwest, East Coast to understand. We just, that's the reason we live here. It's just beautiful. It's four seasons and it's mild. It's hot in the summer, but it's really not that hot. It's cold in the winter, but it's really not that cold. This is why we've got so many marked seasons through the year. Of course, the most most uh, popular time is spring, April, May. Uh, that's because everyone's been inside so long, they just want to get out and get their hands dirty. And so you get this pent up demand. But really your best summer planting, summer uh, blooming things are planted now. This is Rose of Sharon's and crepe myrtles and desert willows and chitalpas and Apache plumes and yuccas and agaves. And you can go on and on. Salvias, rosemaries, lavenders. Uh, they, they prefer when the soil is warm. And this is also when you see them actively grow. That's why I encourage folks to to fertilize right before the monsoons hit. If you can fertilize right then, you can take a, a young a shade tree or fruit tree or, or a small rose or lilac, and you can really get it to bulk up. You can really get it to, to upsize, to mature faster because it's a growing season right now. Unfortunately, it's a growing season not just for plants. You'll see them actively. You can almost watch them grow, especially the vines, acabias, uh, uh, some of your blooming annual vines. They're just so fast. So do the bugs. Bugs can really take over if you're not careful. Uh, This is when you folks that feed the birds, you all really benefit from feeding the birds. Because when the birds are in there eating your seed and that kind of stuff, they're also pecking around looking for grasshoppers and slugs and snails and earwigs and pill bugs and uh, the other insects that tend to put holes in into your squash and flowers, that kind of stuff. Unfortunately... They don't find them all. And so this week I had to really focus on my petunias. Petunias were seeing some of their leaves, some, not the leaves, the petals on the flowers were disappearing, having holes in them. That's one thing and only one thing that, well, I guess it could be two things, maybe three, but basically what I had was budworm, a little tiny caterpillar, as cute as can be. And all they eat are the flowers. So they can leave a petunia very quickly within, oh, seven, 10 days, and nothing but a green blob hanging from a hanging basket or in a container. Well, that's not why you plant a petunia. You know, so I'm, I'm spraying mine with multi-purpose insect spray. And I've already done it twice before, uh, but I just keep, I monitor, I look for holes in my flowers and I go, oh, gotcha. I know you're there. I don't, I can't find you. But I'm gonna, you're gonna be gone tomorrow, and so I'll break up my hose in sprayer, and I spray down the foliage. It's like a, the foliage, the the flowers, the whole plant, with multi-purpose insect spray. It's a special bug control we've made for here at Waters Garden Center. Really effective. It also works on earwigs. They'll tend to hang out in the bottom of your containers or in in between the rocks, and they crawl out and they start to eat. Uh, your squash, your tomatoes, things that kind of touch the ground. Same with pill bugs. Uh, They'll just come out at night when the birds aren't really out there, 
and they start to, to take the flesh off the bottom of your your fruits and vegetables. A quick trivia, if that's even of interest, the reason they call them earwigs is because back in the day, the 1600s, 1700s, when you used to wear a wig, keep you warm, it's fashionable, make you look really handsome and cool, uh, you'd store your different wigs. You didn't have just one. You had several. You'd store them up in your closet. Well, many times when you put your wig on your head, these bugs would come out and they would like to crawl into your ears. Thus the name ear wigs. That's, I, go, we don't wear wigs anymore. Now they just hang out in the yard, not your closet and your wigs. And they eat your vegetables and your fruits. But <laughs> kind of gross. I don't want that happening to me. Uh, anyway, that's that's earwigs. They're they're not really they don't really kill your plants, but they can really make the fruits. They can damage the fruit. And you know you're in the harvest. We are actually starting to pick vegetables, peppers, squash. You've got watermelons on. It, it's looking really good. Cucumbers are coming out fast. Uh, the flowers, zinnias and petunias and geraniums are really looking good. You, but you want to watch them because. Everything is growing faster now, including the insects, the plants, and the insects that like to eat the plants. So kind of kind of watch that one. The rumors that I'm hearing of, of grasshoppers is building. So they're, they're, they're starting to, they're, they're small right now, which is when they're actually, they, they do the most damage. I took a picture and posted it to Instagram, my Facebook page, and it was like a five, six inch grasshopper. It was a monster. I've never seen anything like it. I, I had this horrified face as I positioned it. It was half stunned, uh, looking like it was going for my jugular. It was a good Instagram photo. <coughs> it makes for good, you know, Waters Garden Center it's garden information. More than you want to know. It, it, it got a lot of comments. But they aren't the ones that are dangerous. They don't eat a lot. They fly far, but they don't eat a lot. It's the little guys with small wings. They don't move very much. They crawl across the ground and they start to devour everything in their way. Uh, in, the, in the morning, on the east side of your buildings, your barns, your sheds, they'll kind of hang out, kind of warming up, trying to get warm so they can go out and eat your gardens. There, uh, here at the garden center, we've, we've laced the entire facility with NOLO bait, N-O-L-O, NOLO bait. It's, a, it's a, like wheat laced with a virus that they're terribly allergic to, and they, they stop eating and die. In addition, what I've done in my own gardens, uh, when they're really active, they'll tend to congregate in certain kinds of plants or certain places, certain weeds. I'll go out, and while I have my multi-purpose insect spray, this is one insect control I have on the shelf always. I just have it ready. When I have my hose-in sprayer going, I will spray... My petunias, and then I'll go ahead and spray where I think the grasshoppers or mosquitoes or earwigs are hanging out. If you touch it, if you spray it, it'll keel over, quiver, and, and die. Really effective for grasshoppers, for uh, blister beetles. There are uh, starting to be waves or clouds of these black beetles. They can be gray and spotted, they can be black and striped, but they're about an inch long, about a, a quarter inch wide, with a big, big body, small head. And kind of pinchers, and they just strip uh, uh, mimosas. They strip uh, Spanish brooms and uh, certain plants. They just they strip all the foliage off. They love potatoes, uh, which means they probably also like tomatoes. So you can watch that one. Just have it ready. If you see that, have your have your whatever that control is. You should have a couple on the shelf just ready to go. So for for me, what I have, I have triple action which is my go-to whenever I start anything I see in the yard, mildews, bugs, aphids, thrips, I'll start with that. It's very inert. It's organic. You can spray up to the day of harvest. You don't have to worry. I just don't worry about it. Uh, it it's a fully organic, good biological control. When I really need the big guns, I pull out the multi-purpose insect spray, and this is a concentrate. So I'll have either a pump-up sprayer or I'll have my hose-in sprayer ready to go and I'll just hose down things. And so I, I had a party. The whole staff came over to our house on Thursday, a backyard barbecue, just kind of a celebration, wives, kids, just everyone came over. And uh, I sprayed down the entire yard the night before just to get rid of mosquitoes and flies. You know, a mosquito and fly for a backyard par barbecue and ants, they destroy. Everyone's heading in indoors. 
Well, I just took the hose and sprayer and the multi-purpose insect spray and called it, just thinned it all out, and we had a great party. Just there's there's ways to use. You gotta be ready when you see issues. Lisa Waters Lane coming in with your garden questions right after this. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Hi, Ken here with the Plants of the Week and our Purple Magic Crepe Myrtle. You'll be wowed by the sheer amount and intensity of the purple blossoms that shadow this impressive bush. Leaves emerge as bold red foliage in spring and then turn bright green just as the purple flowers erupt in summer. It blooms twice, first in summer, then again in autumn. And at $39, you can have more than one in the gardens. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love to garden, they love to shop. Hi, Ken here with the Plants of the Week and our Timeless Beauty Desert Willow Tree. Large, fragrant burgundy and lavender flowers appear in big, bold clusters all summer long. This unique water selection is prized for its extra-long bloom time without the need of seed pods. The flowers are highly attractive to hummingbirds, 100% Arizona native and just $59. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love their native plants to really bloom, they love to shop. You've been listening to Ken Lane, the Mountain Gardener. Green thumbs learned while working in the Family Garden Center. Now welcome back to the Mountain Gardener. And we are back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio, my favorite gal in all the world. The gal that captured my heart as a youth, as a youth. (laughs) (laughs) Been married for 30 years. Three years. No. 32 years. 32. Now, wait a minute. Let me do the math here. Oh, you do that. 87 to... to yeah, you're right. You're right. My wife is right always. Thank you. So, anyway, she comes in and at, just basically reiterates your garden questions. What are your neighbors talking about? And so, I think that's valuable to share. So, welcome to the studio, Lisa. Thank you. Garden Center sure looks good. So, mm-hmm. the end caps are, you've had some fresh new stuff coming in. They're in right. bloom. Mm-hmm. It's very exciting. All like, the kind of later season blooming stuff. So, it's very, very pretty. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like Christmas. I mean, working at a garden center, if you're a gardener, the trucks are rolling probably two or three per week. Uh, from flower trucks to herb trucks to tree trucks to shrub trucks. Just there's different things. Um, and, and you open those doors up, and you go, oh, I've never seen that color crepe myrtle. I've never seen that. Look at that rosemary. Wow, look how pretty that is. Oh, my gosh. So it's kind of like it gets your heart all Twitter-pated. Twitter-pated. Every time. I mean, I've been doing this for decades. It's still, it's exciting. It is fun. It's so, fun to look at the new varieties, new colors, and go, where could I put that in my yard? Yeah. And you usually go nowhere. Well, we are getting kind of full, but there's always room for Jello. You know, you just always get a little extra room for. Yep, you got it. Okay. So, or I'm at this point, we're taking things out to make room for something else. So mm-hmm. that uh, the um, uh, artichoke chat agave, the the real tall, it's yeah, in yeah. bloom, and so it's 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 going to die. Mm-hmm. I'm going to harvest that flower because it's a piece of art. I'm going to put it up against the fence or do something with it. I don't know what yet. I'll probably spray paint it and turn it into artwork. I'll do something fun. I'm afraid, very then, afraid. Uh, there's a big hole right there. So yeah. I'm either going to plant another one uh-huh. uh, or kind of reset or something different. I don't know. What, what do you think? So when you see something new come in, you open the doors up to the truck. You go, oh, I've never grown that before. It'll probably be one of those. Okay. Well, if I see it. I'll snap Grab one. it. Yeah. Okay. Question. Sure, yeah, go for All it. All right. Lori wants to know, how does she know when her sugar baby watermelons are ready to pick? You cut it open in the middle, <laughs> you open it up, and if it's red, you know. And so I, I actually posted something on Facebook. Uh-huh. That this is one where it's valuable to follow us mm-hmm. uh, on, on Facebook. And so we that, that entire thing is nothing but local garden information. So I just posted one on corn. How do you know when corn is ready? Just posted one on on watermelon. How do you know when watermelon is ready? But basically, watermelon is going to be a tease. It's kind of like gardenias or 
or rhododendrons in spring. They've got these big buds, and they don't open for a long time. You see them all winter, and they finally open up in spring. Well, watermelon is, they form a long time. They're sitting there. You're going, oh, it's going to be so good. My mouth is actually sitting here watering behind the microphone, <laughs> thinking about our watermelon. Uh, but really, the, the bottom will start to turn a bit color, so mm-hmm. it won't be this perfect green globe right now. And you'll see that, yeah, you can thump it like you do at the mm-hmm. grocery store. That actually does work. And then the fruit will actually have a, a discoloration on the bottom. It will lighten up. Mm-hmm. So you kind of know, oh, sometimes you can smell it. Uh, but you're probably a bit early yeah. right now. So we were, we were driving through Wyndon, Wyndham, Wind, Alamo Lake. What is that town? Uh, anyway. Wyndon. Wyndon. Wyndon, yeah. I think so. Whatever that little town is, they're picking watermelons right now. Oh, okay. And so the entire field is just being harvested. Yeah. And we've got to be a month behind sure. them at the very least. Mm-hmm. So I would I would think you're into September, you're a month out before you're really ready. Mm-hmm. Um, so that be patient. Okay. Good to know. Same with cantaloupe, watermelons, muskmelons. They're all kind of the same. All those melon yeah. melons. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Well, we have a pumpkin question. Ooh, even better. I love pumpkins. <laughs> so Zach is growing um, the gigantic pumpkins. Yep. Has a really nice big plant growing in the yard. Has about four to five pumpkins started on it. So his question is, can he let them all grow or does he need to take some off? Well, it depends. So yes, you can let them all grow and they will all form pumpkins and they'll just be all smaller. So if you're John, if you're going to enter it in the fair and go for you know record weight, which we're not in record weight country, I'm happy if I have a 50 to 80 pound pumpkin. That's good for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they'll grow up to. I think the record for the state is seven, eight hundred pounds. Wow. It's a big boy. It's as big as a car. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're doing that, you want to pump. You want to prune everything off. Let all of the energy go into that one fruit, and so it upsizes. So it just depends. I think for most folks here, the Atlantic Giants, if you just have one that's you know, bigger than a microwave oven, <laughs> that's, you know, that's a 50, You're 70, 80 pound. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good pumpkin. So with that, you can leave all four on mm-hmm. and, and let them go. Just watch your watering and stuff. But, and then the other one to watch is watch the field voles or field mice. Mm-hmm. Uh, they'll come up and eat a hole in the bottom. This is personal experience talking. It's very discouraging. You see this beautiful pumpkin, and then all of a sudden it stops growing. You go, what the heck is going on? And you look it over, and it's drilled a hole in the bottom and eaten all the seed in the middle. <sighs> so kind of watch them. You just yeah. want watch pack rats, that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Uh, and then fertilize water, fertilize water, fertilize water often, mm-hmm. and it will upsize, get you more, um, more pumpkin. Then good luck trying to move it. Yeah, when well, it's a wheelbarrow. <laughs> we move ours with the wheelbarrows kind of stuff. So yeah. or a dolly and with a blanket and just roll it uphill. Mm-hmm. Ours is in the backyard. We're going uphill about two stories yeah. to the front yard. And then we'll keep it up there out of pride for, to, through the end of the year. I mean, well, it's, you know, paint it red, <laughs> turn it into a Christmas ornament, do something because you took so yeah. much energy. It's, yeah, to make know. it happen. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Well, I would like to know, he has a smoke bush, been in the ground two years, growing very nicely, except it has one branch that's got a wild hair, oh. it's getting a lot longer than the others, and yeah. at a weird angle. His question is, can you just trim that back, or yeah. is that going to be a problem? Yeah, absolutely. So the book, what the, what the pruning books say is, you can prune up to 10% of the foliage mass off any time you want. Middle of summer, middle of winter, spring, fall, it doesn't matter. And that's one where it just gets this wild, it puts all of its energy on one branch. So it's got to, so when you're pruning that one back, if you can prune it back about 18 inches at least or more, there's a growth hormone in the, in the tips of trees, of plants, mainly trees and shrubs, where it just, the plant goes, oh, push all of our energies into this one zone. And so it just grows and grows and grows. And it will, it'll keep doing that until you cut it off and cut it back about 18 inches. It cuts off that growth hormone. And now the plant goes, well, uh, what am I doing? I don't know where to go. And so it starts focusing on the rest of the plant. So you'll, you'll get a bushier, fuller plant mm-hmm. by pruning off that wild hair he's put or just that long branch. Mm-hmm. Same with trees. Maples are that way. Sycamores are that way. Uh, locusts. Mm-hmm. You're all kind of like that. A lot of people ask, too, uh, so 
the smoke brush they put off that little bloom or plume on yeah. it can that be trimmed off when it's done there's no problem with that right? no no you can any flower you want to prune off is fine and often it can rebloom depending mm-hmm. on what the variety is uh, we, we leave the the that whiskey wispy uh, flower on top and until it gets dry and crispy, and then you can prune it off. So absolutely can take it off. But part of the joy of a, of a smoke bush, the reason it's called smoke bush, is the flowers look like it's a smoke rising up from the top of the, of the plant. Mm-hmm. It's so pretty. Yeah, definitely. Well, we'll sneak one more in here. Michelle has an Akebia vine growing in a pot. It's kind of lost its color. It's kind of oh. more yellow instead of dark green. What she, can she use, being that it's a container, what can she use to help green it back up? Really easy. Come into the garden center. This is really specialized now. So we've got a liquid chelated iron. It's an iron deficiency. So she's flushed out all the all the nutrients in the soil. So the plant's literally starving for iron. It's like an iron deficiency. The, the plant is anemic. And so give it some iron, but not just any iron. It has to be fast released. So that liquid iron is called liquid chelated iron. It comes in a quart or gallon size. Get it, mix it up in a watering can, pour it in, and it will start to green up literally by this time next week. I would, in addition, give it some all-purpose plant food. Sprinkle some just regular, you know, hearty food, but specifically go after the fast-released irons, and that's going to green up pretty much any plant you see that's yellow right now in the yard. That's the solution. Uh, the the liquid chelated, C H E L A T E chelated iron will green it right up. So great questions this week, Lisa. Uh, Ken and Lisa Lane and the Mountain Gardeners be right back. You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. the Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens. I hate weeds. Monsoon rains are so refreshing, even my landscape comes alive. But so do my weeds. Stop weeds in their track in one simple step. Water's weed and grass stopper spreads like fertilizer. It kills weed seed before monsoon rains allow them to sprout. No need to weed. It's safe for trees, even flower beds, and so much safer than that toxic waste the big box sells. Weed and grass stopper. It's just $24 and only found at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Hi, Ken, with our Vine of the Week and our Arizona Sunset Trumpet Vine. Huge, deep red flowers cluster to create a dramatic summer show. This vigorous vine thrives and blooms with near neglect. Fast growing to cover chain link fence, shade structures, and trellis quick. Easy to train as a ground cover up a rock face to hold soils from erosion in just $34. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love vines that bloom red, they love to shop. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lane. I had a a breakfast with a buddy of mine this week and he shared his story. It's cruel. I mean, he's truly cruel. Uh, A friend of his gave him a tomato plant. And now they're comparing notes to see how they're both doing. And they've asked questions back and forth. And it's, it's almost gotten calamitous where they're comparing, they're, they're racing to who gets the first tomato off their vines. And they're close. They're Rutgers and Better Boys and just a, a mixture of plants. Well, we're cl- these are medium to larger sized tomatoes. And they're, they're showing, but they aren't showing color yet. <laughs> this guy, he's so funny. He, uh, <laughs> He goes down to the Asian market down to Phoenix, he and his wife, and, and they're picking up groceries, and he found this beautiful, large tomato, fully ripe, organic, I mean, right out of the crate, and he picks it up, takes it home, takes a picture of it on his counter going, oh, look, I just picked my first tomato, sends it to his buddy and goes, how are your tomatoes doing? <laughs> Cruel. And so I'm having breakfast with these two, and they're going back and forth at each other. But that's gardening, isn't it? I mean, that's just kind of, it's part of the fun, comparing how it tastes, what you're growing, uh, just kind of fun, fun part of gardening. I had someone uh, uh, drop off to me. He's bragging about his peppers. Um, he's got a Brazilian starfish. He's been talking about it for two years. I'm going, yeah, 
I'm tired of talking. I don't believe you. I've never seen one of these. And he dropped it off at the store today, this this week, going, here, as promised, here's a couple. Of, I'll take them home and I'll try them and grill them, add them to some salsa or just see how they are. But it's it's bragging rights. It's fun sharing. It's social. It's connection. That's what the earth does. That's what your gardens do. That's what flowers do and hummingbirds and just being out there, sipping a glass of wine, watching a sunset or sipping coffee and, and just reading the paper and are surrounded by beauty. It's just part of that, that joy. And so there's a lot of plants that you can grow that, that don't take a lot of care. You do not have to be a slave to your garden. You truly don't. Now, for, for Lisa and I, we have a couple gardens, mainly the front yard. It's high touch, very high maintenance, and we love it. We love every bit of it. It's lots of container gardens. It's a time lawn, lawn that we don't really mow. It's just sitting there looking good all the time, but we water it. Uh, some roses, but the backyard is completely on its own, low care. We might touch it twice a year, and we focus on the backyard on the native type of low care plants not just native but just there's some that are that act like natives russian sage that plant is actually from afghanistan of all things uh, from the high hills the cold country of afghanistan but a, a russian general was roaming around a botanist a gardener uh, you know it's funny how many soldiers are plant folks uh, they just travel the world, and they have this interest. They try to collect and bring home different kinds of plants. Well, that's how Russian sage got its name. It's truly not native to Arizona, but it's found at the same elevations in Afghanistan at a similar latitude uh, to where it does really well here. And so it acts like a native. But then you can also grow uh, yuccas and agaves, which truly are native. Uh, many of the yuccas, we've got quite a broad variety that do really well. Many of the agaves or century plants, those are the ones with the big stalks that are growing up. Those things do, there's several varieties uh, that grow here because this is this is agave uh, country. There's lots of varieties that grow here. To sumacs, that's one of my favorites. I grow three or four different varieties of sumacs, and I'm not, I'm not talking poison sumac. I'm talking decorative, ornamental sumacs from large tree type, um, uh, um, staghorn sumacs. This is 10, 15 feet tall and magnificent, fabulous fall color, but the stems look like they've got this velvet, like a, like a stag's horn, and thus the name, staghorn sumac. It's a little higher maintenance and more aggressive, tends to sucker some, but my favorite of all time, is tiger eye sumac. This is a real low growing, maybe three, four feet tall, very ferny, soft looking. You'd never guess that it was it was a native. It just goes wild. Uh, but it's tiger eye. It's a new variety in that the gold of a tiger's eye, that's the color of the foliage. It's very beautiful, gold tinged in green, stunning. Still has that staghorn kind of velvety uh, uh, stem to it, but very tough. I mean, you, I, I water it maybe maybe the first few months, and then it never gets cared for again. And it just looks great year-round. Uh, there's a low-growing, I think they call it a low-grow sumac. Low-grow sumac, of all things. It's a ground cover. I often will spec that in designs into uh, hillsides that are just really tough to grow things. Well, you can put a low-grow sumac that just get it established, even with drainage, is terrible. Rocks are in there. You plug it in, it just starts spreading out. One shrub that's 18, 24 inches wide will turn into this six-foot round, beautiful ground cover that's tough as nails. It blooms in the spring. Hummingbirds like it. Nothing eats it. Uh, no, no javelina, deer, nothing bothers it. It just has tremendous fall color. It's got a lot going for it. There's a lot of things like that. That you can grow in your own backyard with virtually no care. Be right back. The Mountain Gardener, your source for timely garden advice right for higher elevations. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. High waters with this week's Plant of the Week and our Black Satin Blackberries. A thornless, milky smooth blackberry that loves the Arizona sun and produces the most deliciously sweet, deep blackberries. Soft pink flowers cover the nimble canes and then yield hordes of the most delicious, juicy blackberries a gardener could hope for. Ready to plant in just $19 and only found at Waters Garden Center. 
1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Where people who love to grow the sweetest berries love to shop. Hi, Waters with the Plants of the Week and our Black Lace Elderberry. Tense purple foliage is finely cut for a dramatic effect. Creamy pink flowers contrast nicely with the purple leaves. The red berries are edible and make delicious elderberry wine, jams, or just left on the bush to attract birds. A dramatic accent are planted as a trouble-free head-high hedge and just $17. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love their elderberries, they love to shop. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert, Ken Lane. Mountain gardening is very rewarding, with a few of Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts sure to turn your thumbs even greener. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. And we are back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio, and she comes each week. This is just her segment, so we just hear all about a different angle of gardening, uh, with coming from your your creativeness, your floral background, your uh, feminine, just just I think just you get ten gardeners in in a room, and you're going to get twelve, fifteen different ideas, and it's just valuable to have a different uh, a, a thought process. And so, and you're my favorite gal in all the world, so I thought, oh, I'll just share a small booth. <laughs> the two microphones of my favorite gal, and we'll just talk gardening for a while. And that's we've been doing this for Ooh, yeah. three years, seven, four eight. Years? No, I had to really? look back. It's 2011, something like that. Yeah. Oh, a long time, wow. yeah, longer than you think. Huh. That's time flies, doesn't it? it? It truly does. I think it's the kids being in that teenage to driver to launch mode. Uh-huh. Seems like. Life speeds up right then because you're trying to get every last moment out of it. Yeah. And then they leave and you go, oh. And uh, then you then time really speeds up even more at that point. So empty net, we're in that empty nest phase. Yeah. They still come back from college every once in a while. But basically, they're basically on their own. the coop. But yeah. 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 We haven't downsized the family home yet, though. We still got that beast of a four-bedroom, <laughs> you know, two-story <laughs> Big family. We did change out the theater. Theater room's gone. Yes. And we, we just put a regular TV in there. So yes. no no projectors. You know, All the kids would come over, raid the cabinets of popcorn, and mm-hmm. all the candy would be gone. they watch some movie right. or play a game. Now it's just us mm-hmm. uh, streaming something. Us and, and the dogs. <laughs> us and the dogs. It's kind of nice, actually. But yeah, we painted it much brighter, got a nice comfy sectional in there. Yeah. It's a nice room now. Yeah. Yeah. Get a shop, um, a fireplaces for it next. I know. Hey, you want to do that after this? That'd be fun. <laughs> you want to go on a date with me? <laughs> I have to work. Do you still like going on boss. dates with me after all these years? Of course I do. I do too. Yeah. I still look forward to it. I get Good. all giddy. You do. Okay, well, well, you get giddy pretty easily. <laughs> I, I, I tend to live life <laughs> giddy. Yeah. It's true. Energetic. You, that's nothing. Energetic. <laughs> okay. We won't try to explain what that means. <laughs> So anyway, what kind of garden info you got for us this week? Sure. So uh, grasses. I think grasses are kind of one of the underappreciated superstars of the garden, actually. They add such a different texture, such a different look into your yard, into your landscapes. Um, And I think Prescott, this area, the Tri-City, Quad City, Eric Highlands, I don't think we use enough That's of probably them. probably true. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, you know, when we've traveled through New Mexico and Texas and different parts, they've really got it. New Mexico especially. They use the grasses and they use them well. Um, and I think we need to incorporate more of that, especially into our yard where we have so many rock yards. It's just like, oh, my gosh, one more rock yard in the neighborhood. But yeah. getting some grasses in there, they're so easy to grow. Um, unique looking, most of the time very low water uses once they're established. Uh, so I don't know why we don't use more of them. I, I, I don't, I've tried for years to, to push, and these aren't. We're not talking lawns or, or turf no, no, no. or mower kind of grass. We're talking ornamental and pl- instead of a shrub, use this tall, you know, glitzy grass. Mm-hmm. We're talking about that. So. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know why. I think a lot of it is we have the desert influence and desert folks or, or tropical folks, mm-hmm. Southern California, Tucson, Palm Springs. They've never seen a grass. They don't know what grass is. They have lawns, but they don't have ornamental grasses. Mm-hmm. Midwest and 
you know, Northeast and East Coast folks, they have a lot of grasses. Mm. The South, they just have weeds. I mean, grass is a <laughs> weed. It's just they don't do that. So I, yeah. I think it's a regional thing. Some, mm. some types of customers really latch on and go, wow, I, I need more. Yeah. They collect them. Right. And other folks go, I don't, want to, I don't want that. If it's not evergreen and bloom all the time, I don't want it. That's <laughs> like, you know, you get your tropical folks like that. Right. But they're so, pretty easy maintenance. I mean, you're trimming true. them down in, what, March? Yeah. Uh, cut, cut them, them back, back. Fertilize them. And fertilize that's them. That's it. And you that's all you do. water and ignore them. And yeah. So I don't know why they aren't used more. But if there's any landscape people out there listening, put more grasses into your designs and yeah. your yards. Use them. We've got... Probably I don't know how many we have. It's a lot. We have quite a yeah. number of varieties. Mm-hmm. But we look, we open the, the 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 shipping doors and go. Oh, I've never seen that grass before. <laughs> it's a red. It's a red grass or yeah. blue grass or mm-hmm. striped or spotted or there's every kind of grass you could think of. And of course, we're famous for our local native grasses: the bear grass, it's yuccas. Not really a grass. Well, it. it you know, <laughs> You I call it, know. it's not truly a grass. Nolinus. I don't know what that is. Is that a grass family or not? No. I, no. Okay. I believe. But okay. <laughs> Still a cool plant. So what you got but anyway, for us? So Share some, some of ideas. the grasses that we actually have in the garden center that I was taking a look at. We'll start with the big guys first. Big and boys. Of course, pampas grass. I think most people are familiar with that. And that it's a standard pampas grass. It does. It gets huge. It just gets huge. If you got a big property and you're trying to fill some space, pampas grass would be wonderful for you. Uh, what, like ten by ten? Minimum. Yeah, yeah, ten by ten. And then by you get the stalks ten. that come off of that. Yeah. So, um, if you want those, great. But have a big yard to put it in. It does have a cousin that's a little bit smaller, the ivory feathers, and that one probably gets five by five. Yeah, head and then high. Sends or its little stalks short. up yeah. with that. Uh, much more manageable in smaller spaces, but the plumes on it are absolutely gorgeous. Um, we have one at the end of the parking lot every year. People drive. What is that? I want that. You got yeah. that? <laughs> yeah. So it is very striking out in the yard. But you know, at five by five, it's not exactly tiny either. But bright you know, white flowers, mm-hmm. lots of them, big plumes. You know, bigger than your head. Uh, just it's it's a stunning grass. It is a big boy, mm-hmm. and that's the one I kind of prefer because it's easier to maintain. Oh, that's definitely. It. Yeah, we have a really pretty one out there. It's a variegated. Um, I sorry, a variegated Japanese silver grass. Yeah. Uh, variegated grass, so kind of a light green with a cream color to it. Very, very pretty. I could see it used where you maybe have a lot of evergreens, dark evergreens, putting this grass in here to kind of brighten up the area. Or dark rock. Mm-hmm. You just have a rock lawn with the mocha colors. It'd be a real bright spot, contrasting. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. be very, very pretty in there. The other one that's one of my favorites is Carl Forrester. Um, and I have no idea who Carl Forrester was. But well, he's a good friend. I want to tell you about him. <laughs> <laughs> but he must have created this grass or found it. Um, but it gets with the clump, the green part of it, what, about three yeah, by behind, three? Yeah. And then it sends up maybe two more feet in kind of a wheat-colored stalk. Uh, those stalks last well into winter. So yeah, it's yeah. really pretty to have. And it's one of the first ones that blooms early. So you can start those stalks early, and it goes all the way through till we get a hard snow on it. But great for transitioning into those fall pots that you've got, or just really pretty out in the yard. Super green, I mean, like deep, rich. I mean, richer than, I mean, deeper, darker than an Irish green. We're talking mm-hmm. dark. And then that contrasting wheat-colored plume, it's striking. Very, very pretty. And our dogs love to go out there and eat it. They do. I don't, it's, it's a because we have to, several grasses, and they 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 think go it's delicious. Must that. be sweet tasting. It must be. If you want to feed the deer? It? Bring it in. <laughs> no, I don't think we're going to do that. The plume tastic muli grass, very very pretty. But one I want to tell you about that it's new this year is a red headed fountain grass. Oh, gets about two to three feet tall. Uh, really cool grass. It's it's a fountain grass, which most of them aren't hardy for here, but this one is. Oh, really? Yeah. So, and it is red. It's got a red tinge on the, top. Uh, plumes kind of have a oh, tan to red I tinge. I haven't seen that one out there. I'll take a look. After mm-hmm. the show, I'll, I'll run out and take a look at that. Oh, that's interesting. It's a really cool. So green foliage mm-hmm. with a red tinged 
right. uh, plume up to about knee high or so. So mm-hmm. something like that. And the other one we got real quick is the burgundy bunny grass. And that one does have red tinges of grass stems through it. And then in the fall, it turns a bright red. You know, we've got an empty pot in the backyard. <laughs> there you go. And grasses look good in containers. Why don't yeah. we grab one of those, take it home, and, oh, and we'll plug a plot, plug a pot. Plug a pot. That's, that sounds wrong on the airwaves, but... Uh, That sounds like a fun one. Some new grasses to play with. All right. Lisa Waters Lane sharing her ideas on ornamental grasses. Be right back after this. Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website. Podcast the show, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook and Instagram at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. High waters with the plants of the week and our local chase tree. Fragrant lilac blooms cover this tree that can also be pruned into a tall bush and blooms all summer long. No special skills need for this bloomer. Easy to grow, heat loving, low water user, and disease free. These are really nice bushes for $39. We also have very tall trees in bloom for an impressive $120. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love local blooming trees, they love to shop. Hi, Lisa here with the Plants of the Week and our little Janie Gara. Little Janie is a charmer with flowers that float above this 15-inch plant. The fluorescent pink flowers will wow the hummingbirds with Janie's charm as well. Hummingbirds throughout the neighborhood will visit your plants. They're just so popular and only $14. She thrives in hot, dry gardens and only found at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Where people who love their native plants to be beautiful and hassle-free, they love to shop. Welcome to the Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. We are back in the studio. I've got a very special guest. Uh, The Yavapai County Fair is coming up. So it's September 5th through the 8th, I believe. Correct. So next next week, or next couple of weeks away. But I've got uh, Marion Johnson is the Yavapai County Superintendent of the whole fair or just the agriculture, oh, horticulture? Just, just horticulture. Oh, gotcha. Thank okay, you. gotcha. That, that's <laughs> big enough. <laughs> uh, so anyway, she's, she's responsible if you enter a pumpkin or tomatoes or a flower or whatever, mm-hmm. you're taking that segment on for the county fair. Well, kudos to you. Thank you. It's lots of fun. How did you get sucked into that? You just always had a passion for it, or well, you had a friend that kind of said, "Hey, come with me. You're, you're my, doing this." My family, my mother's family, were Cherokee farmers in Oklahoma. Okay. So my mother's idea of putting in a garden was eighty tomato plants. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, we have been planting stuff forever, and it just seemed. Um, I, I think I went to the fairs a number of years ago, and at that point they they had several different locations and there wasn't much, much going on. And a friend and I said, why don't we just take this over? Nice. And so Perfect. every year we're looking for something. We do something new, something different, uh, something especially to draw kids in. I'm really excited about this year's fair because you've got some really interesting now i've been going to the fair since i was a kid i mean before i was driving but before high school uh, i've been going to the yavapai county fair uh and and it's always a magical time it's always the rides or the the entries or the livestock it's just well, there's a lot going on deep fried uh, twinkies and and anything that the dentist will just love <laughs> I try my. You see this girlish figure here. This is not. This is not put together by deep fried Twinkies. So uh, it's by mountain bike riding and gardening and. Uh, but yes, you do have to break the rules yeah. and have some deep fried or you know Indian yeah, fry bread or something. Exactly. So, but I, I love the entries. So tell us what's going on. What? How do people get involved? And and I really, really, really want to know about the zucchini races. Okay. I mean, that is something that I've never seen. And I might even grow a zucchini and, and, and race it down the track. Well, there's there are no age limits Good. on this. Okay. You know, the, the categories that we originally set up were like from 3 to 10 and 10 to 18 and then 18 to 99. So you would qualify, Ken. You know, every man inside is truly <laughs> only 14 years old. I, I mean, know. it's just the way it is. So I, I'd love, if nothing else, I would decorate 
a zucchini just yeah. to have fun with it, just to show it off, to Instagram it. So how do you, how do people get involved? How do you enter in the fair? Uh, you can go online to yavapaicountyfair.com and um, enter there. You, if you are entering uh, products, uh, you need to pre-register. So products being, I'm going to any fruit, uh, any vegetable, got it. any dry beans. Okay. Uh, for the zucchini uh, program, you don't have to pre-register for that. If if a kid shows up at the gate with with an embellished zucchini, not only do they get in free, but um, oh nice, yeah, they they get into the fair free. Okay. Um, but and they've they've got the run of the place after. Is that. that certain age groups? Like, if I decorate a zucchini, can I get in free, or Give is it, it just try, the kids? Big guy. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I like that idea. I, mean, I used to, as a kid, yeah. you know, Boy Scouts and you know that kind of stuff. You would decorate race cars, you yeah. and race them. So this is kind of a gardener's take on that. It is, and it's a um, it's a community thing. We're having the zucchini uh, races, so uh, um, you just show up with your with your zucchini decorated. It will be out on the back porch uh, at the Mackin Building under tents. Okay. Uh, we have about forty five rock and roll car songs that have been recorded that will be playing through this whole thing. Nice. The Beach Boys and and all this. Um, I've received posters from um, uh, engineers that worked for Chrysler and Ford in the Midwest. Wow. Uh, we're trying to get a race car driver uh, t- uh, to come, but I think it's going to be a real busy place. That sounds like a hoot. Yep. Yeah. This is Saturday. So Saturday, Saturday. So this goes Thursday through Sunday. But the, mm-hmm. On Saturday, you can come bring your zucchini. Either grow it or you can go buy it or whatever. So I'm planning on bringing one that's like three feet long, something I forgot to pick, you know, two (laughs) days ago. Yeah. And then decorate it and you paint it. Where do they get wheels? That kind of. How do you? How do you? Good stuff. I have hit up um, the dollar stores, Michaels, Hobby Lobby. So we will have everything that they need to decorate a car. Push pins. Uh, one of the pictures that appeared in the paper, uh, one of the master gardeners when we were practicing this, brought in an emblem. He was in the Army, and he brought in that Army insignia. Oh, perfect. And like a coin or something. Yes, that he just... and brought in a big key to put on the back of his car. So if there are special things that the kids want to have on their cars, they should bring them with them. Yeah, so a 4-H club should... Put their emblems on or, or exactly. wrap it in your jacket for know, scouts or yeah. cook, well, whatever. So, I don't know, Girl Scout cookies all over it exactly. and promote. Uh, and, uh, and we're hoping that everybody goes home with some kind of a prize. So okay. the prettiest, the, ones that, the one that looks like it would go the fastest, um, uh, the meanest looking one, the toughest looking one, the daintiest Perfect. Um, yeah, perfect. But there, we've got some other things going on for kids, too. We've For the last three years, we've had a kid's corner. Uh, it has green carpet in it. There's a, there's a television that has uh, short educational videos on uh, uh, plants and mushrooms and worms and, and all this. And uh, my, my partner in crime is growing uh, beans in be- between um, pieces of paper towel that are wet. So so when the kids come through, they can see what the bean looks like oh, when it goes in. Good idea. When the cotyledon splits and the, the root heads down and the, the leaves head up, so you can see all stages of it. So you're the co-superintendent. Yes. Just to give the others your other co. How many co's are there? There's one co. Okay. <laughs> Gotcha. Her name is Lori Decker. Great. Okay, good. She's also a master gardener, and then there are two other master gardeners on my committee. Perfect. Lori and I go way back. Good friend. Yeah. Good rotary buddies. Yes. There's community, whatever. That's great. So how do you enter in? How do you, what, anything else, like, how do you get in? How do you, give us anything you want to know. I've got a couple minutes. You can just promote it. Okay. The county fair. Let them, let them know. It'll be, at, it's being held again this year at the rodeo grounds. Perfect. Right here in Prescott. Right Prescott, here in Prescott rodeo Prescott. grounds. Off of Fair Street. Um, uh, you can come in uh, probably the front way that has the the horse footprints up the driveway like yeah. you were going to the rodeo. Yeah. 
um, it, it's it, you need to pre-register online and uh, when you bring your vegetables uh, and fruits and flowers in um, um, you will be met with master gardeners that are checking you in that will get these these products in the right places okay um, the judging they'll be prejudged beforehand so they're going to enter those bring them in on Thursday right. afternoon or whatever and then judges that, come in Friday and then you prove ribbons yeah sometime. actually the judge is judging uh, Thursday night okay gotcha. we get finished about 10 at night perfect and and we learn a lot I mean what is it that that a professional judge is looking for yeah yeah um and lots and lots of comments. The master gardeners are there to answer any questions that have to do with how do I prepare the soil, what kind of fertilizer, Perfect. do you need to prune them, that kind of thing. Where would they look at the website? So you said they could look to pre-register on the website. Does it cost to register or is it no, free? You just, there's you just no go in and fill out so they know who's coming. Right. You do the best you can. And, mm -hmm. and we realize tomatoes might be a little late or... Your berries might be a little undersized because the season's a little later. Or, but everybody's but, but in the same, same boat. Way. It's a county fair. We're yeah. all hit by the same stuff. Yeah, exactly. Oh, good. Exactly. Well, I am just so excited, just tickled. And, and, and anything we can do to help you promote that. Thank you I'll very be at much. the county fair. I've been a past judge for this county oh, and others. You. It's kind of it's, it's just a fun thing to go through yeah. and see how yeah. everyone comes together. So And the ki the kids get so excited about this. Yeah. I mean to look at a, a coconut and and say did you know this is a seed? Yeah. Yeah, Pike County Fair September 5th, 6th, 7th and 8th. Zucchini races on the 7th. That's a Saturday. Check it out or go online and uh, just just type in Yavapai County Fair. It'll pop right up. All right, we'll be right back with more on the Mountain Gardener. You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott, 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener. Hi, Lisa with the plants of the week and our tiger eye sumac. You can't kill this native plant, and it's so fancy. Chartreuse foliage quickly develops into lacy yellow leaves, which contrast nicely with the posy pink stems. All this turns the color of orange peels through autumn. A dramatic focal point when planted as an accent at the edge of ponds and dry creek beds, all for just $39. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love fancy native plants love to shop. High Waters with the Plants of the Week and our Dark Beard Spirea. If you want butterflies, fragrant flowers, low water plants that take little maintenance, then look at this dark blue wonder. The dark bearded flowers only grow to knee high and the perfect replacement for aggressive Russian sage, but equally as pretty. A big bold plant is just $49. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love to garden, they love to shop. You've tuned in to The Mountain Gardener with local garden expert Ken Lane. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. I don't know what happened, but it seems like there's a marked increase in the number of hummingbirds and swallowtail butterflies, those two, and painted ladies, uh, but butterflies. Uh, so, so I haven't seen that much, or maybe I wasn't, I wasn't noticing. I don't know. I, I am a man. It takes me a while to figure things out, uh, but I can change. <laughs> Was that the Red Green show back in the nineties? <laughs> anyway, uh, this week, though, I was out just enjoying the gardens, and hummingbirds are everywhere. Butterflies are mating. I mean, they're 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 doing their dance dance stuff. It's beautiful. I I think truly what it was is my certain things that they love are starting to bloom, and so it it wooed or drawed in more of the wildlife that was around me already, but it just condensed it. It just drew them into the gardens where I could notice them more. And so mimosas or silk tassel tree. This is a classic. If you want more butter, this is a tree that's up maybe, I don't know, 15, 18 feet tall and umbrella shaped. But the entire top of it will be covered in these beautiful pink flowers or silky tasseled flowers. Thus the name silk tassel tree. 
th- this plant is pretty, and, and it draws in the wildlife. And, and our backyard is has been designed completely for birds. So we've got waterfalls and features and ponds, and for, we, we didn't rock it over and sterilize it. We, we actually put uh, shredded bark and, and organics over it so they can peck around, and, and we've got berries and grapes some for us, and we planted extra for them, so they've got things to eat. We put wild flowers down there that will provide seed for them to winter over, and we planted many uh, shrubs and trees for the hummingbirds and butterflies. So very purposeful. We said, here's the palette that local animals and butter- wildlife, not I don't want deer and javelina and rabbits back there, uh, but I do want the other things, birds, and we've got periquin, periquin uh, or orchestrals. Uh, I've seen eagles eagles fly over. I've seen uh, blue heron in the ponds. Um, uh, how, of course, hummingbirds and every type of, of bird you could think of. Uh, so the, you, can, you can design that as well. It takes a little bit of strategy to do that. And this is one, this is where you want to head to your nursery and, and ask for the resources or walk me through or give me the list or show me show me which ones are best. And then you can have your, your professional designers help you lay that out, what it looks like, whether it's a couple trees strategically placed or, or, or shrubs border, you know, or on that back fence line, a flower bed that's by the patio or containers that, that woo uh, the, the butterflies in. We've got several lists that are free. Just ask for them at Butterfly List. Hummingbird list, uh, just bird things that draw birds in. How to do it? How to design it? And we've got staff on that can help you as well. Take advantage of that resources. Of course, every weekend we have free garden classes here at Waters Garden Centers. That's kind of our take. That's how that's how we go after the marketplace. You know, we're different. We're better than the box stores. Here's our here's our our banner that we carry through the through the. And we know. And so this weekend it was, what was it? It was bugs. No, no, no. It was attracting bees, birds, and butterflies. Next weekend, it's it's herb designs from beginner to pro. How do you play with herbs and harvest them? Then it's edible trees and berries. So fruit trees, brambles, all, all of that. Wild bu- wildflower, not wildflowers, wildlife and bug prevention. That whole list is at watersgardencenter.com. It's right there. It says garden classes. Real easy to find. Or Facebook under events. You, you just can't miss it. If you're looking, you'll find them. Uh, but free. Come. Learn. Hang out with some other cool people that love funky hats and great gloves and just pruners and, and talking Latin of, of names of plants. Uh, that's that's gardeners. That's, that's us on the weekend. And you're invited. All right, that's a wrap. Ken and Lisa Lane and the Mountain Gardeners, we hang out here at Waters Garden Center each week, and uh, we love helping fans of the show. Hi, Ken. The plants of the week in our plumtastic muley grass. Glittering clouds of vivid purple plumes emerge in late summer and persist through the end of the year. It's a natural and showing off all its glory right now at the Garden Center. A superb hillside plant, especially when situated so that the plumtastic flowers are backlit by the Arizona sunset, all for just $36. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love plumtastic grass, they love to shop. Hi, Lisa with the finds of the week and our Forester Feather Grass. Dramatic bronze flower spikes start blooming in early summer and don't stop until well into next year. The flowers are so light and airy, it's often referred to as feather grass. Growing to just hip high, this dainty grass shows off enough to make a designer statement without being invasive. All for under $30. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Where people who love really pretty grass, they love to shop. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to The Mountain Gardener. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in.